what is good you too man how is everybody doing hope everybody's having a fantastic fantastic day it is tuesday and the 53 man roster is in we know the 53 guys are for the most part the guys that we are going to war with this year i am extremely extremely excited i want over i want so many people in here right now man let's all hit them likes we're gonna go through a lot of stuff we're gonna see everything and i hope you guys are prepared man because i am excited cannot wait you guys already know though big shout out to everybody who's already in the building we got my guy ga we got my guy halo my brother anthony emmanuel brandon gorel boosting uh raider lg antoine shin who else we got raiders for life omar myself of course paul tuave the numbers ryan svt my guy uh will Salvat salvatore uh tighter raider anthony again 52 who, who, who else? Who we, the, the numbers in here. Raiders for life. Isaiah Polamal. Yes, yes. Ben Bad. Sean. Jack was good. Kyle Holt. Let's fucking go. Everybody in here. The Oakland fans says Andy was go, my guy, man. Derek Vehicle. Chris Gang. Jack Rock. Who else? Who else? Jay Giovanni was popping. Keenan. Or, yeah, Keenan. Um, let's see. God damn, we got so many of you guys. Shout out to everybody who pulled up in here. We got uh, Isaac, Ruben, Herman. Jose was good. What is good? What is good? Rob Aguirre was popping. Uh, Raider Rob, I think that's everybody. Kenny Mack, we got X7608. I think I got everybody. Raider Teasy, there we go. Now we got everybody. We have over 100 of you guys in here. Please hit that like button, man. Get this out into the algorithm for other big time Raider fans to see. Um, shout out to my guy, Tesla Investor in the building. Andy, my guy, was good. But check this out, man. We got our 53 guys. Our 53 guys. Um, Andy, your boy, Verone McKinley, was cut from his team. Interesting, man. We'll see whatever. We'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. But listen, let's get into some stuff, man. Now, let me ask you guys. You guys want to go through the list that was cut or, you know, some, some guys that um, made it first? Let's see. Let's go here. Let's see. My guy, GA, thank you very much. That means a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my brother. We got Darth Prime uh, on Twitch with it. Thank you, man. Um, yeah, GA pulled up and, and 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 did his thing with the uh, with the super in the building. Let's go. Um, but check this out. I'm going to pull this up for you guys. And really quick, I have myself a list of, of standout guys that made the 53. In my eyes, um, it was a surprise that all these guys made the 53. Um, some guys weren't as big as a surprise as others. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is all exciting times. I'm going to take a look at the 53 right here. I'm pulling it up for you guys. Some, yeah, there is some surprises. There's some, there is some surprise um, guys that made it. And then there's some, some surprise guys that did not make it. So hold on. Share that. Share that. Boom, bam, bop. But all right, first. First, 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 first. First is this. All right, standout guys that made the 53-man roster. T. Billy, Tyron Johnson makes it. DJ Turner, undrafted free agent out of Pitt last year, who I was surprised didn't make the roster last year, if I'm going to be honest. He flashed a ton out of the slot. I really, really like what Amik, or not what Amik, what DJ Turner did out of the slot last year. He didn't make the roster, but he gets his turn this time. Isaiah Pola Mao, the six foot four safety with sub four four speed, makes the roster. Very, very, very surprised about that. That is one UDFA. Another guy um, with a, such a crowded, with such a crowded running back room, still makes the roster. Is our seventh round pick out of UE, UCLA, Britton Brown. Then we go over to the defensive backs department again. We have Britton. Or we have Sam Webb out of West Virginia. He makes the roster. Thayer Munford, another one of our seventh round picks. He makes the roster. Lucas Masterson, 
and Darian Butler make the roster. Those are some of my standout guys that did end up making the roster. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, but I see a lot of people mentioning this, and I do want to talk about this. I really, really want to talk about this right here. And shout out to Kyle Holt for bringing it up. And everybody, hit that sub button, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Um, if you, man, you like Redder content, man, hit that sub button if you haven't already. But shout out to Kyle. This is a Meek Robertson surprise, Andy. I am shocked and absolutely shocked that Amik makes the roster. Now, the reason why I say that is not because I dislike Amik. I like what Amik could have been, right? But I think that for Amik, it was a little too late. And the reason why I say that, first, second, and third preseason games, I didn't see anything good from Amik, if I'm going to be honest. This last preseason game, he was making tackles. He made a nice hitting coverage. But outside of that, he did not do anything, right? He did not do anything. Now, Two guys that I was really, really interested in seeing what would go down with was Sam Webb and Bryce Cosby, which both of those guys I thought outperformed Amik Robertson in this preseason. Now, let me say this. To me, it is confusing that we keep Amik, cut Darius Phillips, and trade Trayvon Mullen. Trayvon Mullen gets shipped off for a conditional seventh-round pick to the Arizona Cardinals. Now, depending on playing time, the, the seventh round pick could turn into a sixth round pick for Trayvon Mullen. Now, I did not think that would happen, but at the end of the day, he was dead weight in terms of the fact that he was not out there. He was not out on the field. He wasn't improving the team. And at the end of the day, he was on the last year of his contract. Rocky Sin was looking good. Anthony Averett was looking good. Nate Hobbs is turning into a superstar. My only question is why not? keep um Bryce Cosby and I think that Darius Phillips would be back on this roster one way or another if I'm being honest with you so I'm not too surprised about that but Bryce Cosby to me easily better than Amik Sam Webb is a bit more of an outside guy but I do understand why they kept him now I don't want to shit on Amik because he is a Raiders player okay he is a Raiders player, so I don't want to be shitting on the guy. Um, but it definitely was uh, surprising. Now, let's move over to the other big news of the day, and that's the Las Vegas Raiders moving on from our first-round tackle from last year, Alex Leatherwood. Now, I'm going to start off by saying this. I am a big, big supporter of letting guys develop. That is how I feel. I love when you let a guy develop, and sometimes, yeah, you bite the bullet, you try to let them develop, and they, did any, they didn't do anything, they were the same player. Or you let them develop, and they turn into standout guys. Me personally, what I saw from Alex Leatherwood in this preseason wasn't a guy that was going to develop in my eyes. I saw a guy that, let's face it, there are certain players that when you're playing in the fourth quarter of the last preseason game, it's not because you're fighting for a roster spot. It's fighting for a spot on the practice squad. And this is what I saw. Alex Leatherwood was continuously getting beat by guys on practice squad performances. He was not showing promise. He was not showing promise in stunts. He was continuously getting beat with speed and power. His run blocking was okay. Now, let me say this. Do I think that cutting him was the right choice? I don't know. That's 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 could be looked at in very, very, very different ways. Because in my eyes, you look at a guy like Alex Leatherwood and you say, okay, well, if you bump him inside, he'll do better. That is true. But this is how I will combat that. If you bump Alex Leatherwood out into the inside, you still failed. And honestly, I think that Lester Cotton is a better guard than Alex Leatherwood. I think that Dylan Parham is a better guard than Alex Leatherwood. So I leave you with this. Is it right to keep somebody on the roster just because they were drafted highly? My answer is no. So do I think that the pick or the option to move on from Alex Leatherwood was smart after one year? I'd say that we need to give it some time, but I'm not surprised. I'm not worried. And I'm honestly not upset about moving on from Alex Leatherwood. And the reason why is because your window 
is now. Your playoff window is now. Your Super Bowl window is now. If you don't think that Alex Leatherwood is a top seven lineman on your team that you want to travel with every single week, I understand the move, okay? That's what I think. If he is not a part of your top seven you're taking to, to, to travel every single game day, I'm fine with it. And, and frankly, I think that he is not a top seven guy, okay? I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I don't think he's a top seven guy on the, on, the, on the offensive line to travel with. Simple as that, man. Simple as that. I did not see enough from Alex Leatherwood to be like, wow, this was a bad move. But I'll tell you what. I did see enough from Trayvon Mullen to say, how the hell do we keep Amik and not keep Trayvon Mullen? That's what I will say. I don't really understand the Trayvon Mullen one, but at the end of the day, best ability is availability. So we got to see. What I do like is that this new regime is sticking to their guns. Whether it's a contract, we don't care. Whether it's how highly you, we were, you were drafted, we don't care. And I respect that a ton. It puts a chip on these guys' shoulders and lets them know that they're not safe. It makes them work hard every day. Shout out to Raiders for Life. It says, it's because we could save two mil with Leatherwood Cup. We needed to get some money back. I think it was a good move. Well, there you go. That's a de decent way to look at that as well. Um, shout out to 818 Raider. He says, Jamarcus Russell of this generation. I don't think so. I don't think that we had that big of hopes for a guy like Leatherwood. But in my opinion, I think that there's people making it seem like Alex Leatherwood was, I don't know, the best fucking, the next Ryan Ram chick from the, from the Saints. He's simply not that. I think that people were trying to make it seem like Alex Leatherwood was, um, Who's who's the left tackle that's with the Niners right now? Trent Williams. He is far from that. Now, at the end of the day, could you have let him develop? Sure, sure. But at the end of the day, that's going to cost you a roster spot as well. So look at that in that prism as well. If you kept Leatherwood, maybe you wouldn't have kept um, a guy like Sam Webb. Maybe you wouldn't have kept a guy like DJ Turner or T. Billy. So there is a way to see these kinds of things. So there's how I look at that. But enough of my chitter chatter. I'm going to have you guys review the 53-man roster with me. So the Las Vegas Raiders decided to make their final 53 cuts. And here are some, uh, or these are all, these are all of the guys, okay? Check this out. Quarterbacks. Derek Carr, Jared Stidham, no surprise there. We keep six running backs slash fullbacks and only five receivers. Amir Abdullah, Brandon Bolden, Britton Brown, Josh Jacobs, Jacob Johnson, and Zamir White. Six guys all on the team. Now, something that I want to look at here is Amir Abdullah is a guy that, yes, he's listed with the, with the running backs, but he could have also been listed here with the receivers. And the reason why I say that is because he does have um, lots of versatility, lots of film on the inside as a slot. He also can take a lot of these screen passes. So Amir Abdullah is a utility piece. He's listed as a running back, but he can do everything on top of also return kicks. Now, um, wide receivers, we kept five. We have Devontae Adams, Matt Collins, Tyron Johnson, Hunter Renfro, um, and DJ Turner. Now, in my eyes, I definitely think that Keelan Cole should have stayed on this roster. Now, one thing that I do understand, if you keep Keelan Cole, you don't have a big body wide receiver, right? If you keep Keelan Cole, you already have um, – you know, a guy like DJ Turner, Hunter Renfro, Tyron Johnson, Devontae Adams is your exception, but you don't necessarily have a big body receiver. Now, me personally, I would have preferred to keep killing Cole over Mac Hollins. That is just my opinion. I know that that may be um, an unpopular opinion, but me personally, Mac Hollins, I hope that he lives up to these expectations that people are putting on him. But personally, I do not see it. Now, going to the tight ends, it is Darren Waller, Foster Moreau, and Jesper Horstead as the guys that we are keeping. Now, Jesper Horstead um, is not a blocking tight end. He is a receiving tight end. Foster Moreau um, by far is the best blocker out of these three. So interesting to see that we didn't really keep a main uh, blocking tight end like we have done in the past with Derek Carriers. But not surprised with that. Now, you move over to the offensive lineman. You have Jackson Barton, Lester Cotton, Jermaine Illuminor, Andre James, 
Colton Millen, Diller, Colton Miller, Dylan Parham, um, Thayer Munford, and John Simpson. Now, I think that this is the biggest question of the day, and I want you to answer this, okay? Biggest question of the day in my eyes is that man right there with the box around his name, Jackson Barton. Jackson Barton, would you have rather preferred to keep Alex Leatherwood above Jackson Barton? Because at the end of the day, that's really who it comes down to when you look at these initial, um, initial 53. It looks like Jackson Barton also was a guy, you know, he's played with the uh, New York Giants. Um, he's played with, I believe, one other team. So if you look at it, right, is Jackson Barton right now a better offensive tackle than what Leatherwood was? Interesting to look at it that way. Um, that's exactly how I'm looking at it. Now, in my opinion, I think that Jackson Barton had a better preseason. But honestly, I have not seen such a poor performance from a right tackle like I did with Leatherwood in a long time. Now, we're sticking with the trenches. We see we kept 11 defensive linemen. So this is the initial 11 guys. Andrew Billings, nose tackle. Tashawn Bowers, edge rusher, Matthew Butler, D-tackle, Max Crosby, Neil Farrell, Cleland Farrell, Jonathan Hankins, Chandler Jones, Malcolm Coons, Bilal Nichols, and surprisingly, Kendall Vickers. I didn't think that Kendall Vickers was a guy that was going to make the roster, in my opinion, but it is dope to see that he has. Now, if you ask me, would I keep Kendall Vickers over Kyle Pecco? Yes. And the reason why is because Andrew Billings um, has emerged. He definitely has emerged and he did look good. Jonathan Hankins has looked good. Now, the big asterisk right now is on Neil Furrow Jr., the nose tackle that we just drafted. He really decided to kick it up a notch last, um, last game against the New England Patriots. And I hope that that's something to build on. Okay. I hope that that is something to really, really build on. But Solid group there definitely could change in the, in the upcoming days um, with all the talent that's being released, all the talent that's being traded. Definitely could change very, very soon. Now, linebackers, this was a position that really it had a ton, and I mean a ton of different ways it could play out. Now, we had signed Micah Kaiser. We had signed Kenny Young. Immediately, those two guys, they dropped. They dropped instantly. Um, Kaiser goes on IR. Kenny Young gets released. So we are now looking at Nick Bolton, Luke Masterson, and Darian Butler. Who's going to be the two guys to really step up? Well, here's the list. We got Jayon Brown. We got Darian Butler, Divine Diablo, Luke Masterson, Denzel Perryman. Those are the five guys at linebacker that we are choosing to rock out with. I am actually confident in that group. Jayon Brown, a coverage guy. Darian Butler, a coverage guy. Divine Diablo, best of both worlds. Luke Masterson, best of both worlds. Denzel Perryman, the traditional thumper in linebacker, man. So um, very, very interesting to see this as well. Not surprised one bit. Now, I think I had to have missed. Um, oh, no, I did. I did say Jermaine Illuminor. Now, going to safety. Jonathan Hab Abram, Deron Harmon, Trayvon Merrick, Isaiah Polamal, and one of my favorites, Roderick Teamer. Very, very happy that Roderick Teamer made the roster. I, much like T. Billy, I really, really like both of those guys. So to see Roderick Teamer make this roster puts a smile on my face. Great special teams player. Um, also is a very, very solid guy to um, to play safety. So very, very good. interesting to see what happens. Um, but Isaiah Pola Mao, the six foot four, sub four, four running safety out of USC makes the roster. What do you guys think about that? That is interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm going to be honest. Very, very inter interesting to see Isaiah Polamau make this roster. Now, my opinion. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. You see this man right here, Amik Robertson? I would have much rather us keep Darius Phillips. I would have much rather us cut Amik, keep Trayvon Mullen. Or... 
This is how I would have played things out, right? This is how I would have played things out. You keep Mullen, you drop a Meek, and what you do is you drop Isaiah Polamau and you keep Bryce Cosby. That's how I would have played it out. But at the end of the day, I'm not getting paid to make these decisions. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to make these decisions. So all I could do is give you guys my thoughts, my opinions, and how I feel about this would have played out. Now, I like Isaiah Polamau. I do. But personally, what I seen from Bryce Cosby, there was no way that I was keeping Bryce Cosby out of this roster. No way. No way that I was keeping Amik, uh, um, Amik Robertson over Bryce Cosby in no way, shape, or form. I would have dropped the Meek, kept Trayvon Mullen, and dropped Isaiah Polamau, and kept um, and kept um, Bryce Cosby. Simple. That's what I would have done. Maybe I'm crazy, but yeah, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Now, cornerbacks, you have five. Anthony Averett, Nate Hobbs, Amik Robertson, Sam Webb, Rock Yasin. Interesting. We're, we're going to definitely need to add one more um, here, in my opinion. You definitely need about six, but we'll see. We'll see what happened. Um, now, specialists, no surprise here. Daniel Carlson, AJ Cole, Trent C. No surprise there, man. No surprise there. Now, I do want to say, let me look at this. Let's go over here at the top to see who are the guys that we released, right? Who are the guys that we released? Okay. Uh, talk that shit. Hope Andy, uh, Ho Andy, Hope Cosby makes practice squad. I agree. Bryce Cosby absolutely needs to make the pra practice squad, in my opinion. Um, no way, shape, or form around it, honestly. There's no way, shape, or form around it. Now, I'm going to bring this up in a different tab here for you guys to see something else. But let you guys think. Ooh, what's going on with Marcus Peters? What are we talking about Marcus Peters for? Is there anything going on with Marcus Peters? You're just talking about bringing him home. I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Marcus Peters, um, Oakland born, Oakland raised. I would love to bring him over to the dark side, the team that he grew up watching. Um, I don't think that the Ravens will let him go though, honestly. So we'll see. We'll see what goes on with that. But the Raiders' initial 53-man roster, very, very interesting. Now, I did see some people saying that they didn't really think it was fair that after one year, Leatherwood got the boot, but after three years, Cleland Furl has stayed. At the end of the day, it's not really up to us. It's not really up to us, you know? So we'll see what happens. Isn't Cosby listed as a safety? No, Cosby did not make the team. Cosby did not make the team, and that is a bummer. Definitely, definitely a bummer. But um, I know we looked at the list of the 53-man roster, but here's the list of the guys who did not make the team. So um, we have waived the following players. Alex Bars at the guard position was waived. I actually thought that Alex Bard played pretty decent in my eyes. Uh, Curtis Bolton, um, a guy that I think got signed in the second preseason game, so we did not see too much of it. Um, yeah, he got waived. Ike Brown got waived. Bryce Cosby, unfortunately, got waived. Uh, Quinterio Cole got his got the boot. Cole Fotheringham got the boot. Chase Garbers got the boot. Leatherwood, out of there. Jordan Meredith, Bamadel Olaseni, Dylan Stoner, Myron Tagovailoa Mosa, Zach Van Valkenburg, uh, Austin Walter, Isaiah Suber. Then you go to the guys that were released. You have Keelan Cole, uh, Hronis Grasu, Grasu. Then you have Matthias Farley, Darius Phillips, uh, Kyle Pecco, and we placed Jacob Hollister on IR. So let's do this, you guys. Let's have a little bit of fun. Okay. We know. Hold on, let me put this down for a little bit. We're going to have a little bit of fun right now. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do, okay? I want you guys to take a pen and pencil out, or pen and paper out, and we are allowed 16 practice squad players. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down that list of guys that we waived, and I want you guys to write down 16 guys 
that you would keep on the roster or on the practice squad. Now, if you don't want to do all 16, I want you to see that list and I want you to write down three guys that you would protect on the practice squad every week because you only have three protected practice squad players, okay? So what we'll see. Uh, so when we see initial 53, what does that mean for near future transactions? Initial 53 is just the first 53 guys. Obviously, you know, guys get placed on the IR, somebody comes back on, so then that's a different 53-man roster. Um, or, you know, you know, at the end of the day, guys get hurt or, you know, off the field issues happen, shit like that, right? So it's just the first 53. It's just the first set of 53 guys. Um, but that's all it means. And shout out to Graham Cam um, related to one of our new members of the 53-man roster. Um, so that is dope. Happy for you. Happy for your family. Now, let's do this, right? Okay. Practice squad protections. Alex Bars, it will be a little bit interesting to see if we can get Alex Bars on the practice squad because he is a veteran. Um, but practice squad, Alex Bars makes mine. So that's one. Bryce Cosby, that is two, a thousand percent. I'm going to keep Cole Fotheringham, that's three. Chase Garbers, that's four. Bamadel Oleseni, that is five. Myron Tagovailoa Amosa, that is six. Who else? I got six guys right now. Uh, Zach Van Valkenburg. I will like to see a little bit more of Zach Van Valkenburg, so I will keep him. That is seven. Dylan Stoner can come back on the practice squad this year if you would like. That is eight. Um, Jordan Meredith did okay. Jordan Meredith did okay, so I will keep him. Uh, Curtis Bolton will definitely make mine in my eyes. Um, Keelan Cole. I doubt that he doesn't find a new home very, very soon. Um, Darius Phillips, I think that he will be back on the 53. So I'm stuck at eight guys. I'm stuck at eight guys right here um, to look at. Maybe they all head over to the practice squad. I really do like what I saw out of Myron Tagovailoa most in that last game. Bamadel Oluseni, Jordan Meredith, um, all guys, right? All guys. Garbers to the practice squad for sure. Absolutely. Um, I think that if I'm protecting players, my three practice squad protections, if Bryce Cosby is to return, de definitely Bryce Cosby. Um, let's see who else. Bamadel Oluseni would be interesting. I don't think that we need to uh, um, protect him, so to speak. Um, but yeah, these are the guys that we waived. These guys all did not make the team. So interesting to see. Interesting to see. We signed some one, say two players, three got cut. Crosby, Meredith, but Butler is solid as hell. Hell yeah. Butler is nice. Um, Garbage to the practice squad. Bryce, Bolton, and Phillips. Cosby, Walter, Bolton. Was good. My boy was good. My guy Joshua in the building. I like Vickers. Interesting. I mean, I think that um, just because we don't rotate as much in this new regime. I don't know how much Kendall Vickers will actually play, but um, yeah, I think that Kendall Vickers is a guy that if I'm trying to make way for, if I'm trying to make way for Darius Phillips to come on the roster, pause. Um, I mean, Kendall Vickers. Oh, you get four protections this year. Okay. So maybe you add... I don't know. I don't know who you would add, but interesting to see that. But like I said, man, very, very happy to see that Tyron Johnson, also known as T. Billy, made the roster. DJ Turner, very happy to see that he made the roster. Um, now, Thayer Munford making the roster is no surprise. Lucas Masterson, Darian Butler, very, very interested, right? Because check this out. Those two guys right there, if all goes to plan, Darian Butler, Lucas Masterson, those two guys can very well become the future of the Las Vegas Raiders linebacking core. Now, some guys may say, "Well, whoa, 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 pump the brakes on that one. You're 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 moving too fast, right?" And in my eyes, I like to think ahead sometimes. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. But if you take a look at what our linebackers look like, Unfortunately, this is their Denzel Perryman's last year, and we only signed Jayon Brown to a one-year contract, right? 
So you take a look at Lucas Masterson and you take a look at Darian Butler. Well, Lucas Masterson, he's a good player. He could become your future. Darian Butler, he could become your future. So if you take a look at it like that, they get a year to sit behind two veterans in Jayon Brown and Denzel Perryman, and they can really be molded into the future of this linebacking core. Very, very exciting to see what happens um, going forward. But let me ask you guys this. Outside of Amik Robertson, because I definitely feel like that is the guy that everybody's like, how the hell can uh, Amik Robertson make this roster, right? I want to ask you guys, outside of Amik Robertson, who is the biggest surprise? Who is the biggest surprise? in your eyes, that made the roster. In my opinion, Isaiah Polamau is my biggest surprise. Biggest surprise. Not because I don't like him, but simply because I felt like so many players had a good preseason, and I felt like he was too quiet. He was too quiet. Now, we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. We'll definitely see what happens. Um, I just want to see something um, really quick. Cleveland Furrow, okay? Cleveland Furrow, it's a surprise that Cleveland Furrow made the roster. I'm not too surprised about that, if I'm going to be honest, that Cleveland Furrow made the roster. Um, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I think that Patrick Graham definitely has a plan for him. And, um, yeah, we're going to see it. Film breakdown. So, Raiders for Life, thank you for mentioning the film breakdown. Tomorrow, tomorrow, everybody. Everybody, and I mean everybody, tomorrow, 10 a.m., tune in. I am dropping a, yeah, at 10 a.m., I am dropping a film study on how and why I believe Darian Butler, one of my favorite guys on this team now, made this roster. So we're dropping a film study on someone who made this roster. So check that out tomorrow. Um, immediately when it drops 10 a.m. West Coast time, you guys should see a new, a new film study in your face to watch. So let's all get educated. And um, yeah, we'll do that. Shout out to my guy, Javi, man. He says, what's up, Andy? Love your show, my dude, Raiders. Shout out to my guy, Javi. Thank you for the dono, man. Y'all know y'all never have to do that over here on this channel, man. I'm just happy y'all pulled up, supporting me. And uh, yeah, man, I love you. But um, so a little bit of new news. Uh, Jacob Hollister um, was placed on IR. So with uh, Jacob Hollister and getting put on IR after he actually doesn't miss the entire season. He'll miss, he'll um he'll miss the first three weeks, and then they'll be able to reopen um the fact of him possibly being able to make the roster. Shout out to my guy Graham. He says, "Open their eyes, Andy." I mean, we've been trying to tell him. You know, I was skeptical at first, but I will say this, man. Um, the writing it wasn't like the writing was always on the wall for him to make the roster. But let's be honest, right? We have Antonio Pierce, and Antonio Pierce we know is going to do whatever he can to coach these guys for them to do their best at the next level. And I think that from day one, right, from day one, Darian Butler flashed. From the first game in the preseason, Darian Butler flashed. And um, I, did a, I did a UDFA film study on Bryce Cosby. Unfortunately, he did not um, – he did not – you know, uh, make the roster. That is very unfortunate. I hope that Bryce Cosby makes the uh, practice squad at the very least. But fortunately, Darian Butler did make the roster, and that's exactly what we're going to get into tomorrow, 10 a.m. Remember, 10 a.m. West Coast time. So that's 1 p.m. if you're on the East Coast, 12 noon if you're in the in Central. So, um, yeah. Check that out, Darian Butler Film Study. Kyle Holt, yes, that is what we do here. When we do film studies here, we learn about the good and the bad. Fortunately for Darian Butler, it wasn't much bad that he did in the game uh, besides maybe two or three missed tackles, but I'll take that because he did so much good, and we'll get into that um, tomorrow, man. I am very, very happy, but, man, y'all are going to see it looked like Lucas Masterson got them picks, and he did. But, bro, 
Darren Butler like a pit bull dog. He did the dirty work. I, I you know what? I'm giving up too much info, man. Just wait. Tomorrow, film study, dog. But yes, Kyle, that's what we do here. Film studies that show uh strengths, film studies that show weaknesses. Because if I only did strengths, it would be like a damn highlight reel out here. And that's not what we do here, bro. Um, let's see, film breakdown eyes on Isaiah Polamau. He was he he wasn't quiet. Isaiah Polamau, I did bring him up a little bit. Now, I think that you know, Thayer Munford. Okay, let me let me let me say this, right? Sam Webb is somebody that I'm intrigued to do one on. Isaiah pull him out, maybe. Um, you know, you have Thayer Munford who played that one game, looked fantastic. But really, you know, it's the two linebackers that I really want to do one on because I think that those guys have the highest potential to really become the future for the Las Vegas Raiders at their respective position. Lucas Masterson could be the future. Darian Butler could definitely be the future. So that's why I want to do these film studies. Very, very excited to see what they got. And I hope tomorrow when this drops, it has a bunch of love. And I hope you guys are looking forward to more film studies after. Um, shout out to, oh, hold on. Film breakdown. Okay, I, I did get to it. Okay. Whew. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you in Adelanto, bro. Appreciate you coming up and chatting it up for a quick second. Appreciate you for showing up and showing out, EJ. Um, you're always showing love in the chat, so I appreciate you for pulling up. But we will continue to do better, man. Them events, that was just the beginning. Uh, Ahern was just the beginning for the draft. Um, there's so much more to come, man. So much more to come. And everybody that did show up, like my guy Digi, bro, um, we spent a lot of time together. He says, Andy, my primo, I hope you had a safe trip back home. Thankfully, we did, um, or I did. And shout out to my guy, Digital Press, always doing so much work within the nation, man. Um, definitely a lot of credit goes to this guy right here. And, uh, hey, man, if y'all love my intro, it's because of this beast right here. So shout out to Digital, my guy, Dizzy, in the building. Um, let's see. Chargers are not letting Gorilla Rilla wear his outfit in SoFi Stadium. What do you mean? Did they put, like, a restriction on what you could wear or something? Because if they did, that's whack. If they did, that is whack as hell. But you know what, Omar? I get it because they don't want to look like we really run L.A., but, you know, at the end of the day, we do. So it is what it is at the end of the day. Now, let me tell you this. We talked about the surprise guy, the, the surprise that was able to meet it. Let's see. We, we were talking about the surprise, you know, the, the guy that was able to meet the 53-man roster, right? And then now I want you to talk about who's the surprise guy that was cut. In my opinion, it was killing Cole. Surprise cut for sure. It was cool meeting you guys, but that Alonto event was not cracking, bro. There was so much that could have went better, and it's crazy. So much that could have went better, bro. Um, and for that, we definitely apologize to you guys, bro, for sure, for sure. And I, and honestly, bro, I appreciate you for being fucking real and being honest for sure. Cause we know that we could fix hella shit. We know that moving forward, that shit is not even, <laughs> it'll never be like that again, bro. Appreciate you for pulling up and being honest. Uh, Cosby, I think that Keelan Cole was for sure the surprise guy, um, that was cut. Let's see for sure. Yeah, most definitely, bro. Um, they can't do that. What the fuck? Yeah, that is weird, Raider Reaper. That they'll try and put like a restriction on uh what he can, what he can and cannot wear. That's whack, dog. That is whack. Um, let's see. Um, Andy, what Siegler gonna do with the waiver wire? We'll see, man. There's a lot of guys that you know obviously are on waivers now. Um, I think the guy that I'm most nervous about not making it, um, through the waivers. Who I mean, man, man. Okay, let me read this list, right? Let me read this list, and you guys tell me who's somebody that you think unfortunately won't make it through the waiver wire, okay? So shout to Scout. Shout to Scout. This is a list right here. This is a list of the guys that have to go through waivers. Hopefully, we can get these guys back. Now, if I had to be honest, Alex Lelywood probably won't clear waivers. He was a first-round pick. Guys are going to want him. Um, 
I think that the guy that probably won't clear waivers is Alex Bars. And probably Alex Bars, that's that's it. I think that everybody else, they'll be um <laughs> I think that I think that everybody else will have a strong, strong chance to uh make this roster for sure, man. For sure. Um and really quick, we got a ton of the members in here right now. If you do want to become a member, go ahead. The link is in there. <laughs> hey, he says FSAP. He's dead to the nation, bro. Shout out to Daniel Kim, bro. He pulled up. Um, that was amazing spending time with my guy, Kim, out there in Adelanto. Hope you had a safe trip back home. Everything went well. But you see this list right here, right? Who do you think won't make it? For sure, Alex Leatherwood's not making it through waivers. This is probably the prized possession of the Raiders' waivers. Leatherwood won't make it. There's going to be a team that's going to be like, you know what? We're going to give him that shot. Chase Garbers, I think that other teams have their quarterback situation already done. And Dustin, I hope that Bryce Cosby makes it. Like, honestly, I do. But, bro, Bryce Cosby, force fumbles, tackles for loss, Past breakups. He did everything in the preseason. He did everything in the preseason. Like, man, it is disappointed, bro. And I don't want to just sound like I'm over here just, you know, you know, talking about Bryce Cosby this whole time. But holy shit, dog, what else could the man have done? He had four games. He had a he had a pass, but he had past breakups, tackles for loss. Um, what a forced fumble. What else could he have done, man? What else are you going to ask of the man? I really enjoyed uh Bryce Cosby. I really, really do hope that he clears them waivers and he gets back on the roster. But I think that, uh, oh, really? I did not know that 300. So, um, apparently that's interesting. Whoever claims Leatherwood will have to pay him six million guaranteed, though. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it seems like we do, GA. It seems like we do. Very, very interesting. Um, Bryce Cosby over a meek all day nation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what happened with Seth? <laughs> he was being a hoe, bro. Just leave it at that. Let's just leave it at that, right? <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Uh, me could only dream of Cosby stats that like, come on, man, <laughs> come on. But let me ask you guys this, right? We made a trade and then we made a massive, massive cut right now. Like, um, let, okay. Let's say it's a school grade, school grade. F being the worst, A being the best. What would you guys grade? Matter of fact, go out of 10, out of 10. One through ten, how do you guys feel about the Alex Leatherwood release? Why isn't Bryce Cosby and Luke Masterson uh, on Madden 23? They'll probably have to do the adjusted uh, depth charts very, very soon. Very, very soon. Um, bro, if Amik had Cosby stats, he would be way better. Exactly. Wow. Eight, so Malik likes it. Um, let's see. Three, you don't like it, Raiders, till death. Miguel says five. Rosa says ten. Um, boss, ten. Zombie, seven. Six and a half. Eight. Eleven. Happy as fuck. What do you mean, eleven happy as fuck? Oh, shit. Shout out to my guy, Daniel Kim, becoming a member. Unfortunately, this fucking um, thing right now isn't working. Or let me see if I can get it to work. But unfortunately, this goddamn... Uh, <laughs> This fucking, this thing isn't working, so I can't make that noise. But shout out to Daniel Kim for becoming a member, man. Much, much appreciated. Four and a half, nine. He had all the opportunities to shine. I 100% agree. 100% agree. He had chances, dog. Bro. Bro. You got to play in every preseason game. Honestly, he got worse in every preseason game. Sorry, buddy. Pack your shit. 
Pack your shit. Okay. With that being said, it seems like the nation is pretty divided with the releasing of Alex Leatherwood. Now, let's move on. Trey Von Mullen, second round pick out of Clemson, played with us, had some decent years, but he was struck with the injury bug last year, and he wasn't able to get out in practice this year because he had his surgery, didn't get to do much, didn't show didn't showcase himself in practice because he couldn't. Trey Von Mullen gets traded to Arizona Cardinals for a seventh round pick, a conditional seventh round pick that could end up being a sixth round pick depending on play time. What are you guys grading? What are you guys grading the Trey Von Mullen trade? Let me know what you guys think. 10, it was evident all along. We get attached to these players because he's a Raider. You got to think with your mind, not your heart. Thank God for Alex Ziegler making all the right calls. I agree. Mullen move, uh, SVT says one. Mullen move for me is an eight zero. Holy shit. Five because his late uh, as F injury. Five, three, five, five, ten, ten. Okay. Damn. Interesting. It seems like it seems like we were more excited or not more excited, but it seems like the Raiders or the Red Nation is a lot more accepting of the Trayvon Mullen trade than the Alex Leatherwood release. In my eyes, it's kind of backwards. I'm more accepting of the Leatherwood release and I actually would have rather kept Mullen. Definitely wanted more for him, for sure. Since uh, since I like Mullen, too, but it's about the badge now. Facts. Todd said seven. Nice hat, Andy. No cap. Appreciate you, bro. Um, I think Mullen was our second best corner. I disagree. Um, if you guys have been watching for a while now on this channel, you guys know that ever since we picked up Rock, ever since we picked up Anthony Averett, I had those two as our starting guys. Simple. Simple. Um, 13, because I'm still pissed. He got chewed up against the Chargers two years ago. And he definitely got that work, bro. <laughs> he definitely got that work. Uh, but Mullen wants to start in a big bag on a prove-it year. He might be a backup this year. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Uh, Mullen was locked down. Huge mistake. He's going to ball, no doubt. Um, now, I wouldn't go as far as saying that Mullen was locked down. He definitely was not that. I think in order to be classified as a lockdown corner, you need to be good in both man coverage and zone coverage. And he definitely was not good in zone coverage. That, that's that's without like we don't even need to say that. Um, and we all understand that. Now, I think that with Trayvon Mullen, this scheme would have suited him a lot more. And honestly, I would have much rather have kept Mullen and just flat out cut a meek. I don't know anybody in here who would have just rather kept a meek. If Mullen got surgery earlier, it would have shown his commitment. Honcho did say Mullen was too handsy, and he is. Yeah, of course. I think that anybody can see that with Trayvon Mullen. Trayvon Mullen is a guy that the second he got any kind of separation between him and the receiver, he reverted to grabbing. He reverted to using his hands, which if you're a DB, you don't do that. You stay calm and you try to not get stacked when the receiver is in a position to try and stack you. And uh, Mullen, he, he got beat. And he caused a lot of penalties. Now, he also looked very decent in man coverage. So it is kind of interesting with the way that this went down with the roster. Um, I wouldn't have kept a meek over Bryce Cosby. I wouldn't have kept a meek over Sam Webb. I wouldn't have kept a meek over Darius Phillips. And I sure as hell wouldn't have kept a meek over Trayvon Mullen. So it is definitely interesting to see how and why that's the way that they went 
but um definitely definitely did not see it playing out like that keelan cole was released yes that is very unfortunate raiders for life i did not see that happening um but hey man dj turner had a standout standout preseason uh t billy has been the standout performer of the um you know of the off season i guess so we'll see we'll see what happens um but honestly i hope that Bryce Cosby is a guy that can clear waivers, make it back to the roster, make it back to the to the uh, practice squad. And I think that once we get closer and closer, or or once we just start the season, right, and they see that you know a meek is still a meek, and he didn't really change much. Um, I, I I hope that we end up elevating him. So we'll see who's available at right tackle. I'll tell you one thing. I think that. I think that we have our starting right tackle on the roster. Now, it may not be it may not be the right tackle that we expected. It definitely may not have been the right tackle that we expected, right? It it wasn't Brandon Parker or it wasn't um Alex Leatherwood, but it is Jermaine Illuminor. And Jermaine Illuminor, I have full confidence in him until he shows me otherwise. Um, Jermaine Illuminor in the preseason looked fantastic picking up stunts. Um, he didn't really get beat or, you know, yeah, he didn't get beat. He also didn't let the stunts confuse him. The defensive line game didn't confuse him, right? He looked powerful in the run game. He looked agile and quick enough in the, in the pass blocking department. I think that our starting right tackle is on the roster right now until proven otherwise. So, um, yeah, I think that maybe we should show more confidence in Jermaine Illuminor until he gives us a reason not to. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I wouldn't I wouldn't have kept Amik, but he's a Raider now. Hope he balls out and surprises us all. Exactly my thoughts. That's why I didn't really want to keep like talking about it, but it definitely seems like something that the nation is uh confused about. So that's why I did keep talking about it, even though I didn't really want to, but yeah. Um so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But I definitely, definitely agree. Mullen hasn't shown to be 100% healthy in a long time. Could have been a wasted roster spot. We may be able to get another DB that was recently cut. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Amik has to be running shit during practice because that shit makes no – it makes zero sense besides his mindset. Nothing really flashed. I agree. I agree, Antoine. I 100% agree. Show with show more on possible future pickups. That's that's an option, Daniel. That is definitely an option. Um, let's see. I would have, bro. A meat got more dog and instincts. It's literally just his size to hold him back, um, which he might be able to. Uh, am I tripping? Oh. He might be able to overcome. I mean, I hope that he can overcome that because at the end of the day, he's on this team now. He's made the 53-man roster. So I expect nothing less from Amik Robertson now. He has to show up. He has to show out. I, I think that way. Um, Andy, anyone that got cut you would like to see us pick up? Um, <laughs> Verone McKinley. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Uh, but Verone McKinley did get cut, so interesting to see that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know me. I definitely take a look. But, you know, I think that Anthony Harris, the safety that was cut from the Eagles, um, we should definitely look at, in my opinion. Um, mainly veterans. Mainly veterans I would look at, honestly. He doesn't have a choice. He's not getting any taller. Facts. McKinley, yeah, Raiders, baby. Let's see if, if we have had seen all of the practices, we might have different opinions of uh, the players we have kept over the players we cut. I love Amik. I'm not surprised he was kept over the handsy and inconsistent Mullen. You know what? I agree, Jeff, but only to an extent. Because you know why? You don't make it to the Super Bowl doing good in like. You don't make it to the Super Bowl because your team did well in practice. You make it to the Super Bowl because you did well in the game, right? And Amik, if all he's doing is having fantastic practice performances, but he continues to play how he's been playing in these games, it's not really helping us. 
because I don't see a difference from a Meek in this preseason that I didn't see from a Meek in this last season that we just watched. So, yes, practice is where you grind out and all that kind of stuff, of course. Practice makes perfect, blah, blah, blah. You got to be well prepared, all this kind of shit. Yes, yes. But at the end of the day, it's not a scrimmage. We are playing. We are playing. So I would like to see a move, a Meek drastically improve. Um, but at the end of the day, I hope Meek proves this right, man. I hope Amik proves us right. 100%. Mullen hasn't been the same since he got injured. His tape, uh, his game tape was way too inconsistent. Facts, Daniel. Facts, my guy Kim, dog. Um, Amik has looked good on the field. <laughs> That's fucked up, Miguel, but I, I, I agree. Never, never fully recovered and kept trying to come back. Preseason is vanilla. Different mix of personnel. Exactly. We why we cut Cole though? That was interesting. Sway, sway. Who that was fucking interesting, dog. I did not understand why we did that. Uh, we may get Logan Ryan. I heard Graham uh, loved him in New England. Thank you for bringing up Logan Ryan. It does seem like Logan Ryan, for whatever reason though, will actually go back to uh, to the Buccaneers. But if they can't get a deal done with Logan Ryan. You 100% get on that phone and you are spamming Logan Ryan with calls to get over here. And the reason why, the reason why is um, Logan, he played in this system for the last two, three years in New York with the Giants. And he was one of Patrick Graham's best guys. He's a guy that has that versatility to play slot corner and free safety. So you have to do it. And when I say versatility, it's because he does it at a high level. So, you know, I would definitely do that. Uh, DJ Moore, uh, versatile than Keelan Cole, for sure. Um, we as fans have to be cutthroat just like this staff and hold our team accountable. Can't feel sorry for these guys. Can't make up a roster spot if we don't perform. Exactly. I'm spamming Logan Ryan, Anthony. Facts. Facts. Um, we need to hire Sue and Darrell William, Daryl Williams ASAP. There's a reason why they ain't got signed yet, bro. Do we sign Waller before week one? I think that we do get a contract extension done with Waller before week one. Yes. Um, Amik is just having a spot for an upcoming trade. Um, we release... Cosby hoping he goes through the cracks of all the talent being released. And then we get him back on the practice squad. I hope that that's what happens, Lux, for sure. I, I, I hope that happens. That's a lot of D linemen. Is that normal? Last year we had 12. Last year we had even more. <laughs> Last year we had even more. Mullen had a higher ceiling over a meek, but I am disappointed that Mullen is gone. He definitely had a higher ceiling for sure. For sure. Um, what's good, Andy? Getting here late, my bad. Crazy roster moves. Facts, Brandon. Facts. It is crazy. Uh, Mac Collins is mainly red zone guy. He shouldn't have been kept over Keelan Cole. You know, I actually agree with you. I actually agree with you, but I guess they do want a big body receiver. I just don't understand, man. I feel like I get it. He is very, very good on special teams, and he does offer that jump ball, um, you know, that jump ball option with the quarterback i guess but i just i just don't see it with matt collins man i just don't see it i hope he proves me wrong but i don't see it i don't i truly do not um matt collins is a good locker room guy i get that anthony but that's what we pay coaches for bro <laughs> that's what we can that's what we pay coaches for bro Keeps the team together. So we play coaches for, bro. <laughs> but listen, you guys, we just gave a quick one hour recap on uh, what went down today. It's Cosby Raiders for Life. Um, we gave a quick hour recap on what went down today. So very, very excited um, on what we have moving forward. Like I said, tomorrow we are dropping a Darian Butler film study, 10 a.m. West Coast time. 12 Central Time, 1 p.m. Uh, East Coast Time. So be on the lookout for that. 
And please, on your way out, hit that like button. And if you have not already, subscribe to the channel, man, so you do not miss a video. If you like Raiders content basically daily, hit that sub button. And um, as always, you guys, I love you guys. Please stay safe. Have a wonderful day. And I'm out. Peace. Welcome to the Death Star, where our opponent's dreams come to die.